Uh, hello. Uh, so yeah, the speech will be about the operationalization of attack framework for security operation centers. And today I will present to you the Atomic Threat Coverage Project, uh, which is free, open source, available on the GitHub, and I'm working on it with a few of my friends. So who am I, who we are? My name is Mateusz. I'm working as incident responder in uh, Tieto, in Poland. Uh, Originally, this presentation is supposed to be conducted together with Daniel Yugoslavsky, who works as threat detection, head of threat detection in Syndicator in Russia. Unfortunately, he was not able to, to get here, so uh, I will present alone and presentation will be a bit shorter. Uh, and we also have two other uh, colleagues, uh, Jakob Weinzel, who works as threat detection specialist in Tieto Poland, and Mikhail Aksenov, working as automation team lead in Bison, Russia. Uh, okay, so first question. Uh, please raise your hand if you are familiar with intelligent driven defense. Okay, I can see some hands. So, uh, basically it has really uh, straightforward uh, assumptions. Know your enemy. If you want to be able to defend yourself, you have to know how adversary operates, uh, what are their strengths, and uh, what are their weaknesses. It is very popular in military, although in cybersecurity it wasn't that popular a few, few years back from now, uh, but it changed. When in May, 2000, in May 2015, Mitre Corporation released the attack framework, uh, which operates based on, on this approach, and is the uh, threat model. So I'm pretty sure that most of you guys are familiar with this one, but just to be sure that uh, we are on the same page, uh, more or less that's how it looks like. This is the enterprise matrix from, from this framework, and it, we have the 12 columns which represent the tactical uh, objective, and inside the cells we have the technical implementation to achieve the tactical goals. So quite simple, columns are the tactics, in cells we have the techniques. That's how sample technique looks like. This is exfiltration over al alternative protocol. We have the description, some of the example of usage, and high-level description of mitigation and, and detection for this specific technique. However, there are some problems, mostly operationalization problems. So description from MITRE ATT&CK is too high level. It's not actionable, so you cannot simply take this page, pass it to, uh, to your team and ask for, please guys, could you detect these activities or could you mitigate it? The second thing is uh, kind of consequence of the first problem, which is lack of ability to explain requirements. So it does not provide us the information what exactly we have to configure, how to configure it, and uh, where to configure it. Uh, another problem is reporting to the leadership. So what is the current coverage? What is the progression when, when <coughs> when you decide to work with the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So the problem of coverage is uh, currently in the uh, community there is no like uh, common definition of what the coverage really is. When you can say that you already covered the technique and uh, you can go to, to the next one. So our view on this uh, looks like this. So basically there are four pillars which have to be fulfilled to be able to say that yes, we are covering the technique. Those are the simulation, detection, response, and mitigation. And only if you have uh, the entities related uh, to, to those uh, pillars, you can say that yes, I am covering the, uh, the technique, or at least the known usage of of the technique. Uh, so we, we implemented this kind of the approach, uh, but we want to build a tool which will allow us to uh, do, do more things in an 
uh, automaticable way. So less, uh, less manual job, more automation. And we set a few requirements for ourselves. First of all, plain text files. This has some historical uh, reasons. Uh, when we initially uh, implemented this approach, we were using the Confluence uh, for storing the uh, knowledge base, and it required from us a lot of manual job when we when we are editing something or when we are adding the uh, new entities. So we wanted to make it simple, and uh, as I said, we wanted to make it as automat as automated as as possible. So automate almost everything. Uh, so yeah. Uh, regarding those four pillars, we have the entities uh, which are uh, related to, to those and I would like to quickly show you what we choose or what we've built for those purposes. So when, when it comes to the simulation, we decided to use Atomic Red Team project. This project was already mentioned yesterday. Uh, so this is the tool for emulation of, of the adversary. Uh, what's cool is that it also has the uh, execution frameworks so you can define the list of the tests which you would like to execute and quickly execute all of them on the test system to uh, check how <coughs> to check what you are able to detect or uh, what you can mitigate. Uh, that's how simple trigger looks like. So we have the mapping to MITRE ATT&CK which is really important for us and we have the tests which consist basically of the commands which will be executed on the test systems. So once we are able to emulate the adversary we would like to de detect it. And for this we decided to use the Sigma format. Sigma is a generic signature format for the CM systems and is getting really popular right now. And the concept is quite simple. So there is the Sigma format in which you are storing the rules and there is the Sigma converter which can convert those rules into the queries for multiple search systems like Elasticsearch, Splunk, Curator, ArcSight, basically many of them. And that's how it looks like. We have the uh, rule with, with the simple description, we have the tagging for the uh, matac, attack matrix and we have the conditions which are necessary to match for the rule to trigger on some specific event. So now we need a data which could be analyzed by, by this rule. And for to, to store information about, about the data we decided to create the data needed entities. Again simple YAML format. We have here the sample of, uh, of the log, the fields which are inside, uh, where it comes from, so what is the source and there is another problem because a lot of uh, logs are not, are not produced by default. So you have to configure something and to track this information you also have the reference to the logging policy here. And that's how logging policy looks like. So sample step by step uh, configuration, what has to be to be what has to be configured and where to to be able to collect the the data. When it comes to security operations center, especially if in the managed service providers, you may want to track what is uh, what you are what we are collecting and what is implemented per customers. So another simple entity. When, uh, which you can use for, for tracking. And when it comes to the internal security teams, this might be not external customer, but some group of the hosts or even some specific, uh, some specific server. If you want to go further, you may want to enrich the data and to store information how to do this, we also have the enrichment entities. Uh, so again, simple description, uh, requirements for the uh, enrichment, if it uh, adds new, uh, new fields, they are also listed here, and the config which is needed for the enrichment will be also presented inside such entity. When it comes to the response part, uh, we are using the small response actions uh, with the workflow what to do in case of, of the response. Uh, and uh, response playbooks are, are built uh, with, with those response actions, so they are just small building blocks which are used here. Uh, so you can reuse same response action in multiple playbooks, 
and if you will uh, update one of your response actions, all of the playbooks will be also updated. And yeah, also some other uh, information here like tags, information about the severity, PLP, uh, PAP, and so on. Uh, okay, so more or less that's how our tool looks like under the hood. So the entities in, in the YAML format which I just uh, showed you are ingested into the Python scripts. There with some black magic, uh, everything is mapped to each other and uh, calculated and the uh, dependence, dependencies between the entities are calculated. And then this data is uh, exported to multiple format which can be uh, analyzed or ingested into other platforms. Uh, and following our make it simple principle, we decide to use simple Linux uh, make utility for orchestrating the, uh, the usage of our tool. So with one simple command, most of the things will be uh, generated. So the underlying submodules like uh, Sigma or Atomic Red Team will be updated. And uh, since those are added as the submodules, if you have your own local fork of those projects, with some uh, built-in house rules or, or the triggers, you can attach your own fork of those projects. It will set up the confluence and the markdown repository and push data there as for the knowledge base. Uh, and the confluence is not the requirement. Exactly the same data will be presented in both of, the f of those formats. It will cre create the attack navigator profiles, which can be further analyzed. The playbooks will be exported to the Hive uh, templates, and I will show to you how it looks like uh, in the moment. And uh, the data will be also exported to Elasticsearch Index, so you can do further analysis uh, inside the Kibana. Okay, and time for a small demo. Uh, so yeah, once you will uh, upload all of the data to the Confluence, and as I mentioned, same data can be reviewed in the markdown files, uh, you will get the tree with folders for all of the entities and their human readable, uh, in the human readable format. So let's take a look at sample detection rule, how it looks like here. Yeah, this one. Uh, okay, so we have the table with, with the metadata and all of the links uh, here are, let's say, clickable. So they will take you straight to, uh, to the related entities. Uh, so this can be easily used as the knowledge base. And in the bottom, you will find the original unmodified sigma rule and generated Queries and this part is configurable. So if you are if you are using one system but not another, and you want to save some resources uh, in the configuration, you can choose uh, in which queries you you are interested. Okay, so just for demo purposes, here we can go to the page with with the data needed. Again, nicely rendered. Roll example here. So you can pass this page to uh, CM team or data engineers to show them what exactly they should expect. And link to the login policy. So with one click, you have exact configuration, what to do to, to collect such data. Okay, and let's go back to, to, the, ah, to the detection rule for a moment. Uh, here it will also automatically uh, create the link to the atomic uh, red team test for, for this technique. And in current version, uh, it's, it's only matched based on the technique. Uh, so it might occur that uh, inside the trigger there will be no actual trigger for, for this rule, but since uh, MITRE recently announced the sub-modules, not sub-modules, but sub-techniques, we believe that uh, with these sub-techniques it will be much easier to, uh, to assign the correct triggers. So yeah, here is the human readable with some uh, HTML tags. 
Uh, but yeah, here's the human readable version of, of the trigger, so you can uh, you have the quick access to the command if you would like to perform some kind of of the testing. Okay, and let's take a look how sample response playbook looks like. So again, similar fashion, nicely rendered table. All of the links are clickable here. Here, but uh, the response actions will be also rendered uh, in the bottom. So yeah, it's it's a good for the knowledge base, but such playbooks are not really actionable. Uh, so we are also exporting them in the format which might be imported to the Hive platform. If you are not familiar with this, this is the case management platform. It was built by incident responders for incident responders. Uh, and it's pretty awesome. It has a lot of possibilities for the automation and integration with another projects like uh, Cortex or, or MISP. So if you are, oh, and it's free and open source. So if you are looking for a good uh, incident management platform, you may want to take a look at this one. Uh, okay, so here we can import the template which was created by ATC. Okay, and all of the response actions now will be uh, just at tasks here. And additionally, the information about severity and so on uh, will be pre-populated here. So if we will create the sample case based on this template, I'll just test. Create case, yeah. So that's how case now looks like. We have the description and in the tasks, all of the response actions are, are the tasks, so you can assign it to yourself or assign it to someone from, from your team and uh, start working on case having the pre built template for it. Okay, and when it comes to the measuring the coverage, I've mentioned that we are exporting data to the attack navigator profile. So the tool is available on the internet, but uh, the code is also published on the GitHub, so you can spin up the, uh, your own instance uh, of this inside your, uh, inside your environment. So you can import existing template. And yeah, for now, uh, as you can see, we are exporting, uh, we are creating the uh, profiles per customers and one general with, uh, with all of the data from, uh, from the project. So let's import this one. And here we go. We have, uh, we have highlighted all of the techniques for which we already have some kind of the rules. This is really good for the gap analysis if you want to measure your coverage from detection point of view. Uh, or when you have to present your progression to the higher management. Okay, and the last demo. Uh, I also mentioned that we are exporting data to Elasticsearch Index, which can be uh, then ingested to uh, Elk instance. Uh, and this one also might be used for uh, <coughs> This one also might be used uh, for reporting to higher management or measuring your current uh, progression. So this is the sample dashboard. It was built uh, based on all available, all publicly available Sigma rules for the Windows systems. Uh, we've created this one on 24th of this September, so it's quite up to date. Uh, so some of the sample analysis which, which might be showed here. Okay, so first of all, we see uh, how much rules we have per different uh, tactics. Uh, another thing is just a sample analysis is the dis distribution of detection rules implemented per customer. So we can easily track uh, how many of rules which you've developed are already implemented in some environments and which are just inside, uh, inside your organization and you are not detecting anything with them. Another thing is the distribution of data in the providers. So uh, which data sources provides you ability to implement more rules? And you can easily see that almost half of the publicly available Sigma rules currently are based on the uh, Sysmon data. Once almost 44% is based on the Microsoft Windows security auditing logs. 
Another thing is distribution of detection rules per data, uh, distribution of the de de detection rules severity per de data needed providers. So here you can also easily see that Sysmon is not only, uh, does not only allows you to implement more of the rules, but it will allows you to uh, detect more critical stuff. So if you have this uh, conversation with higher management to install system, Sysmon or not to install Sysmon, uh, this might be used as, as a good point in, in such argument. Uh, okay, another distribution is the uh, detection rules development status. So it's easy to track which rules are still in experimental phase and you have to test them which are ready for production and might be uh, implemented. Okay, and in the, in the bottom, uh, just a list of the detection rule authors, top 10 of them, and top 10 data needed. So here you can easily see that Sysmon uh, process creation is on the first place. The second one is the Windows process creation with the command line. Okay, and let's go to the presentation. Uh, so some of the conclusions, what we, what we achieved. Currently we have the MITRE attack detailed enough for the operationalization. Uh, so we can take the uh, technique and we can easily find which data we need to, to detect it, how to, imp how to collect the, this data, what has to be uh, configured to, to be able to, to detect it. And so what are the mitigation systems which we would like to, which we might want to use for, for the mitigation. We are using analytics as a code, so because we are working only with plain text YAML files, uh, we can use version tracking systems like GitHub or GitLab to track our progression and see what was changed in, in the rules or in other entities. Uh, we have total automation, so all of the exports, mapping, uploads and updates now are made with uh, one simple command. And as I mentioned before that, a lot of this stuff we were doing manually and uh, it was taking a lot of time. So now we have more time to focus on more important things. Uh, we are able to visualize uh, existing analytics for analysis. So as I showed you with uh, sample dashboard in, inside Kibana, we can easily represent what is, what is our progression and show it to, to our higher management. We also have automated coverage representation, uh, so those MITRE uh, navigator profiles. Currently we are generating them uh, only for the, from the detection point of view, but soon we will also generate the profiles uh, for mitigation and uh, mitigation response and uh, simulation point of view. And actually that's the first thing on our list of uh, ongoing works. Uh, another, the second thing is the full Sigma support. So currently we have all of the data which is needed for uh, covering all of the Windows based rules, but we are also working on the Linux part and, and network. Uh, so probably soon it will be, we, we will be able to say that we are fully covering the uh, current rule set from, uh, from the Sigma. We also initiated the Open Security Collaborative Development Sprint, and if you are interested in that one, there is a link pointing to, to the page with uh, more information. So basically, this will be activity uh, on the Haklu conference in Luxembourg in 10 days, if I remember correctly, uh, and it will focus on uh, improving the existing Sigma rules and creating new, new detection rules based on existing and new research. Re, and, uh, new research. Uh, we are also uh, discussing the collaboration with the OSM project. OSM project is the project from Roberto Rodriguez which deals with uh, data dictionary. So, it's kind of similar to what we have in our data needed. So to not duplicate the work, we are looking for some kind of the uh, collaboration 
on, uh, on this part. Uh, we would also like to split projects into modules because if you will go to uh, our GitHub page right now, the readme is like extremely long. Uh, it has detailed information uh, about everything and we would like to, to split it and for now mitigation systems are just the sub-module so all information is in sub-module so uh, it will also allow some kind of the integration if, if someone would like to use only part of, uh, of the project. Uh, we also have the ongoing conversation with MISP regarding integration with, uh, with the MISP Galaxy project. And we are working on the web application with uh, API, so uh, our project could be queried by, by uh, different projects or individuals for some of, uh, of our entities or our analytics. Uh, so yeah, we are uh, warmly welcome any kind of the feedback or suggestions. So if you, if you have any, uh, you can contact us. Uh, if you would like to contribute, we also have the list of the open issues on the GitHub. Uh, demo page of the Confluence, which I showed you, is available on the internet, so you can find it under the first link if you would like to see how, how it looks like. Uh, same goes for demo of, uh, of the dashboards in Kibana. This is also available in the, in the internet. This is the second link, and you have to authenticate there. Uh, and we also have Twitter, so uh, if you want to follow the project, uh, from time to time we are publishing there some, uh, some information. So yeah, if anyone has any question, I'm ready to answer. Okay, seems that there are no questions, so thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.